Okay, so the next thing we want to do is make sure that we go through our initial onboarding checklist. This is essentially the very next task you do once the client has completed their onboarding form. And we just want to verify all the information they submitted is what we need and all of our automated generated files um, are correct based on our Zapier automation uh, zaps that we created already. So let me go over to ClickUp. And you can see that we have this main list, uh, this main task, our checklist verification. And just for quick reference, what I've done is I put the uh, client information sheet here directly so we can click on it and reference it. Now, just to remind you that the way we do that, if I delete it, all we do is hashtag, hashtag, and then we'll, we're able to find the uh, under sales orders, under client onboarding form submitted, then we find the client, and now we have their information sheet. And if I click on it, it'll open in a new tab, and then I can reference all of this information that they submitted. All right, so you can see the very first task that we have here is client info sheet verification. So what I want you to do, and what we uh, want to do, um, even for this client is go through all of this information I already have um, and just verify that it's correct. So, you know, make sure that they gave us an email. Um, do they have the proper URL? Do they have your, their address properly? Right? So all of this information, we would just want to verify and confirm service areas or service types, service areas, right? This is essentially just a roll up of all the information they submitted. Okay, so you wanna go through here and if there's anything glaring that you don't have that you need, for example, what, what's pretty common that we see is they aren't sure what their uh, login information is. For that reason, uh, you know, you may need to message them, go back and forth with the email and, and get in touch with their host. Um, you know, usually they have this information but they just need to find it, so you just need to uh, you know, kind of press them a bit to get this information to you. So once you verify that you have all of the information that you need, um, you can just continue to work with the client via email, uh, call if necessary, because you really need all this information to, to start properly. Uh, so once you have all of that, we can just go ahead and mark this off as complete. We verified the info sheet. All right, uh, so I'll close that. We want to also confirm that the service names file was generated and accurate. This is one of the zaps that we created, one of the automations that we created in Zapier. And you can see here under the color bright painting folder, we have uh, these three files. So we have service names and we have service areas, which also are locations. Uh, again, these are also populated inside of this main roll-up info sheet, but um, it's good to have them separate as well because we're going to work with them a bit later in this project. All right, so we'll just open them up and look and drag this over. So service uh, names, so we have the four that she submitted, good. And I'm going to do the same for areas and I can see all of the cities that she submitted as well, so good. All right, so we know that's done. And we also checked on the locations, we're good. Next we want to confirm that this schema file is accurate and it's a partial file because there are placeholders, uh, if you recall, when we were setting this up in Zapier. So let me open this up and we're, we're just going to go through and just make sure that we have what we need and it's formatted correctly. We can always go back and 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 fix this but so usually the ones that you need to look at right away are um, the social profiles so um, you can either wait at this moment or edit it now because we're probably going to create a few more you know we have Facebook and Instagram but uh, we may add some more I remember this was a, a Yelp question that she wasn't sure what her URL was right uh, but we want to make sure that we have the mo the main information here uh, don't worry about placeholders and things like that. We'll uh, we'll get to that 
when uh, when the time uh, comes. Um, but I can tell right away, street address was incorrect because <clears throat> she actually um, put the city, state, and zip code here as well. So very simple. I'm just going to delete that out and leave it as seven Fieldstone Court. And we've got city, state, zip, and that all looks good. Phone number's fine. All right, so I'm just going to save that and close it. And that is... Uh, good enough for now. Like I said, we're going to revisit this when we uh, actually uh, use this and and finish the file uh, in a later video. So let me go ahead and just mark that closed. All right, so we want to make sure that the client site already has SSL. SSL is just HTTPS versus HTTP. So it's the secure version of the site. So I'm just going to go to colorbrightpainting.com. And it's very simple to just look here in this little padlock and you can see that this site does indeed have uh, an SSL certificate on it. If it does not, then you, uh, you have a few different options. You can go to the host directly. So whoever is actually hosting the, uh, the website, could be GoDaddy, could be Namecheap, could be SiteGround, could be HostGator, um, Bluehost. There's a bazillion different options. Um, if you're not comfortable with it, I would recommend just emailing the host or asking the client if you can, um, you know, email the host on their behalf. Sometimes you just need their permission and you can work with the host directly and just let them know I need this website to have SSL, right? And then that can walk you through those steps. But this is an important ranking factor and it's just one of those things that you don't want to overlook. All right, so let's go back. And this one already has it, so we are good there. Uh, Google My Business Access or Setup. So we want to confirm, do, they, do we need to access their existing Google My Business? Do we need to create it for them? Right, so let's uh, actually look in this information file. And I want to look for, uh, do you already have a Google My Business page? Not sure. All right, that's simple enough. You just go to Google My Business and you do a search for it. Um, I know in the case of this client, I've already talked to her about it. Uh, she does not have a Google My Business page, so we actually had to register one uh, for her. So, And uh, we show that, and uh, I believe Joe shows it in his setup video, and, uh, and it's going to be talked about a bit in one of my later videos as well. Uh, under the Google My Business section. All right, so um, so we, we, you just want to make a note of it. Do I need to create this Google My Business or do I need to get access to it? Um, part of the onboarding thing is asking for access, but sometimes, you know, the client may be in a hurry or they just don't want to do it right away, so they skip it or whatever. So uh, if you need access, just push them into, you know, press them a bit to uh, give you that access level. But if you need to create it, uh, you should start that right away. Okay, so uh, make a note of that and then check it off. Uh, Google Search Console access. Again, this is another question up here. Uh, do you, let me see, where is it? Do you already have Google Search Console? Not sure. I'll tell you right now, most clients do not have Google Search Console connected to their account. Okay, um, so in this case, they weren't sure, but I uh, knew they didn't have it anyway. Uh, most people don't, like I said. Uh, and all we're doing at this point is we're taking, we're just making notes in terms, you know, just jot it on some paper uh, or whatever you use to stay organized. You can even use a note here. Uh, but bottom line is uh, we're just taking note that, hey, I need to create a Google Search Console uh, uh, access for this website. Okay. All right. And this checklist is just pretty much getting us on track in terms of what we need to do going forward. Uh, the next thing, Google access, uh, Google Analytics access or setup. So again, I refer you to the information file. Do you already have Google Analytics? Not sure. Um, at the time uh, when we were working with this client uh, on this particular issue, we found that they did not have Google Analytics installed on their website. And uh, it's very easy to see. So if you go to the website and you view the page source, and then you can do a control F to find or command F for max. And 
it's uh, usually a G tag, something like this. So we've got, uh, you know, you, if, if you see something along these lines, especially the UA, so the UA dash is usually what I search for, UA dash. And uh, so right here, I can tell there's Google Analytics installed. It's, it's actually ours, we, we installed it already. Um, there may be times where the client already has Google Analytics. Sometimes, you know, this is a 50-50 depending on the, uh, the length of time the client's been in business. Um, a lot of them may have analytics installed. Like I said, it's about 50% in, uh, in my experience. Um, either way, it doesn't really matter. Either you get access or, um, or you just make note that you need to create that for them uh, as we go. All right, so let me just close that out. So we would just make note of that. Uh, when I went through this, I made note that I need to create a Google Analytics uh, account for them. And I'll show that in uh, in the technical setup section of these uh, these videos under, I believe it's called Google Analytics Setup. So yeah, pretty straightforward. All right, so again, let's just mark that off. We checked that we need to do that. And then Facebook page access or setup. Um, so all you do here for this is under the information file, confirm if they have a Facebook business page. We already know they put one down here. Uh, where is it? Yeah, so we have the Facebook page here. So we wanna make sure that they gave us access as a page manager. And if they did not, we need to make sure that we get that because we're going to need that page access to uh, create the chat bot for them and uh, create some, you know, some audiences using the chatbot down the line. But we just want to get this set up ahead of time. Um, so the important thing is to make sure that we we get that uh, access to their Facebook page as an admin. And I believe I show that, let me look here in some of my other videos. Um, okay, yeah, so I do cover that under uh, the Facebook chatbot video section. Um, <clears throat> if we actually uh, click on this, subtask Facebook page access or setup. I reference a link here, which you could actually send this directly to the client. And all this is, is a, a way to in, instruct them uh, how to add you as an admin to their Facebook page, right? So it just takes them step by step what to do to add you as an admin. Um, I will say that under step four, uh, so basically they type either your name or your, they use your uh, Facebook email address. Sometimes typing the email address doesn't really, doesn't always work for whatever, whatever reason. So the last client we did this for, she entered my email here, but the save button wasn't allowing her to click it. So all I did was I liked her Facebook page for the business, Color Bright Painting. I liked it as my personal Facebook uh, profile and then I asked her to go back to this form and then just type my name, Daniel Anton, and it, it started to appear. And then she was able to add me that way. So that's just a, a small little note. I don't know if that's just something, sometimes it's just a little buggy with Facebook and that's kind of on them, but uh, it still works uh, by typing in the name. But when you like the page, it gives more uh, preference for your name to actually appear instead of someone else's there. All right, so just a little tip. Uh, so let's go back. All right, and that's that's really it. That's the main things. Those are the main things we want to cover on the initial checklist. We're just kind of making notes, you know, in terms of what we need to do going forward. We want to make sure first and foremost we have all the information for the client that we need. If we don't have something, communicate with them, get that information, update your information document here, so you can always reference it, um, and then make notes, you know, whether or not we have uh, Google My Business access or we need to create it. Same for Google Analytics, Google Search Console, um, and those sort of things. And uh, yeah, let me check this off here. All right, so we have finished our checklist verification and we are good to go. Um, the next series of videos will be based on our technical setup. So that's where we're gonna go. We're gonna get into all of this cool stuff like creating the Google My Business if we need to. Um, what to do with the schema code that we just um, just uh, partially created automatically, uh, analytics setup, and a bunch of other stuff. So, all right, uh, that's it. I'll see you in the next video, guys.